be angels and know what they have I bet it's so nice up in heaven since you arrived Tell me why do you do up in heaven Are your days filled with love and light Is the music, is the art an invention Tell me are you happy more
Is it peaceful? Is it free like they say? Does the sun shine bright forever? Have your fears and your pain gone away? Cause here on earth it feels like everything good is missing since you left And here on earth Everything's different There's an emptiness Oh, oh, I I hope you're dancing in the sky I hope you're singing
present the morning call. Please stand. We talk those of you who are using the redemption song when my life work is ended. And I cross the swelling tide. When the bright and glorious morning I shall see. I shall know my Redeemer when I reach the other side. And his smile will be the first to welcome home. I shall know him, I shall know him. As redeemed by his side I shall stand. I shall know him, I shall know him. By the print of the nail in the sun.
there would be the peace which passes all understanding which only your spirit can minister. And cause our God that even through this occasion, hearts will be blessed, your people encouraged, and those who are not saved will come into an experience with thyself. And so, Father, that even the testimony that has been left behind, even through death, the life will speak. So glorify thyself, bless our coming together, frustrate the worlds of darkness, to thee we give the glory, the honor, and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And those who are on the outside within the reach of our body, we say, we will be prayer. And as I take you through this, we trust that you will be obedient to the COVID regulation and do what we have to do and get out. Usually, we can have some long funerals with a lot of tributes, etc. But we are asking with the prevailing circumstances that we would understand each other and do things that would make each other happy and please those who are in authority. So with no further ado, on behalf of the assembly here at Glen Road and my family, we extend our condolences to the Williams family and to those extended family, to those who are, we pray and continue to hang upon you. The scripture reading will be done by we would now come to the microphone and do the scripture reading. Sister Williams, as at any time for a word. As a younger woman, I remember meeting Sister. Because I already 
confronted. So, Sabia, let's pray. And he would just pray. Pray. She was my prayer partner, prayer warrior. She was really a great mentor to me, advisor. And he was saying, a simple woman has to stop in the arms. How many lives did she touch? But I can tell you, she touched hundreds of lives. It's time for me to stand up this morning and say goodbye to my dear sister. I love you.
and I will see without a shadow of doubt that Sister William did a perfect job. You know, in the of children. And you know what was so nice? You know, sometimes in our generation, you know, we were here, if we live to get old, if we will be alone. You know, and this is one peaceful thing that happened to Sister William. She died with the family around her. Now she protected them. You know, she was like a hen. You know, kind of chickens. You know, and I want to, you know, react, uh, you know say uh, recite a story that was given to me by one that episode. And here it is. He said that he was burning a fire. And he said, why the fire was a light? A cow just fly out from the fire because the heat was pouring too much. But the same speed the cow fly out, the cow fly back in and settle on that spot and die. The fire was spread and all it by just that. And the pass of, you know, more of passing. We will be sober, we will be happy, we will rejoice. No, yet we will be sad, but she is in a better place. She has completed her job. And yet she has before come, welcome, good and faithful sober. Thank you so much. Let's know this. We have a poem that was sent all the way from St. Lucia by our brother Louis Paul. It will be read by Patrice Williams and Kimberly Williams.
I'm not taking all the time, I'm waiting on post, Mr. Dunford. I remember one time I was coming from work many years ago. I stopped by the garage by Winston to get something done. And it would appear as though an angel had spoken to Sister Williams. Hungry and tired. You know, sometimes you feel like you want to fit. Right down. I figured if I had to go five minutes again, that would have been it. And out of the blue, she looked outside and she said, Move it, come. And I know that was her God said. And as she called me, a plate of food as big as I am from a long time. But she would say, Well, Maureen is a daughter, or Clay, Billy, Mobin is a children. But I know of all the names that she would call, I was a special one. <laughs> of course, not because I'm privileged to say, but I know. We were very, very close, very good friends, and I've lost her mother also in the person of Sister William. But as I oftentimes say, we will continue to pray for her loved ones because in our own soul we are convinced that there are those uh, from the children by children who have yet known the Lord Jesus Christ as a personal Savior. And if it is your intent to see her again, to be with her in a coming day, you've got to do the right thing. And the right thing is to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and do it now. You must make preparation to meet God. And by making preparation to meet God, you would see her in the future. Thank you. No one is coming? All right, if no one is coming, the hymn, Blessed Assurance.
we will have the unity and that will be brought by the son Alexander Williams, also known as Juice. <laughs> <laughs> She was born in the island of St. Vincent on the 4th of 
of July 1934. She grew up with an aunt in St. Vincent until the age of 16 years. I recall her telling us how those years were tough ones. She never had much schooling as she would have to spend many days in the cotton field working. About the age of 16 years, her father who was already residing in Tobago, returned to St. Vincent and brought her back to live with him and his wife up at the hills go down at Mount St. George. At that time, her father was a supervisor at the hills go down in those days. We also recall her saying, those days were also very hard and challenging when she was living on the dark. Because she had to travel, that is to walk to and walk or travel to and from Scarborough by foot in order to pursue a trade in dressmaking. But she persevered in spite of the circumstances. And six years later became her vocation in life as she sold most of our clothes, including wedding gowns for me and even all for daughter in laws and for many other persons in and around the community. Around the age of 21 to 22 years, she met and married with the love of her life, her darling sweetheart, Marcel Williams. This student produces six beautiful children, four boys and two girls. I will try to describe my mother using the acronym of her name, Irmin, E-R-M-I-N-E. E, enthusiastic. My mom would have looked unassuming to me, but she was full of life and very energetic. She was very enthusiastic in the activities of her children, and especially in the latter years with her grandchildren. She showed great interest in their school and sporting activities. For example, she participated in swimming and music lessons with her granddaughter Melinda. And at that time, she participated in the swimming, the swimming lessons. She also got a trophy for participating in the swimming. She was also very supportive in taking Melinda and Javon to tennis classes. Mamlo and Elena Brandt and other friends. She even traveled to St. Lucia with Melinda's netball team and was a mother to all other girls on the trip. Ah, righteous. Mom was a God fearing person. She lived her life for the Lord. She ensured that her children and grandchildren were taught about the things of God. Every Sunday, come rain, sun or shine, we had to attend morning worship, Sunday school, and gospel meeting again in the night. Mommy was also involved in visiting group at the church. Every Sunday, we visited group of water and we visit the sick and, and the shutting, and Mommy was one of those places that we had respect for them. Mommy's heart's, heart's desire was to see all her children come to know the Lord, and I hope that her life will be a testimony to those who have not yet been seen. M, mother. Mommy, better known as moms to many and granny to just as much, was a mother to all, both the young, the old, and the in-between.
much. At this time, the word of God will be open, read, and be ministered by the servant of God, our brother Desmond Billy Graham. Adam, the first Adam 
which is the one who he calls here, and the second Adam, or, or the last Adam, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. And we see the first Adam as the head of the human race. We see God is question, questioning him, questioning him about his position. God had placed him in that beautiful garden to take care of it, but now he is absent. He is absent. And we see his reply to the question that was asked to him as God called him. He began to complain about the fact that the woman that thou gavest me led me to the sin that I have committed. But this morning, we are not, uh, yes, we use him as a means of introduction, but we are not, the, um, we are not uh, really spending much time. This is a fact that what took place in the Garden of Eden. Bear in mind that you and I are all descendants of Adam, and the Word of God tells us, as by one man's sin, sin entered into the world. And the reason why we are here this morning is because of that sin that was committed in the Garden of Eden. They were told by God, in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And every day, every moment of the day, mankind continues to experience death. And what death does? It brings separation between God and man. And here we see God saying, where are thou? In our language, where are you? And this morning, God is asking each and every one of you, where are you as far as a relationship with me is concerned? We would like everyone this morning to answer the question. Adam was asked the question. And he said, we heard the voice and we started to say, something was wrong. Once you have to be hiding, something has to be wrong. Normally, if you would walk the streets, you know, day in, day out, you know, everybody would see you and nothing to be disguised about. But once something is wrong, then you have to hide. And God wanted to bring Adam to the reality that something was wrong. And he would also like to bring to your attention this morning concerning your position as far as eternity is concerned. Young man, young woman, older person here this morning, where are you as far as God is concerned? Here Adam said, the word of God said, um, reading in verse 8, and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of God. May I say this morning that men and, men and women continue to hide themselves from God. Men and women are hiding behind things that they aren't even conscious of. Some people, one, of, one place they are hiding is behind religion. May I say this morning that if it's one thing that can take man to hell is religion. Many people, instead of looking to the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation, they are holding on to religion. My parents belong to such and such a religion, and you can't get to change. That is the language of many. But friends, this morning, anytime you hear one preaching religion, forget him. This morning, we are here to preach Christ and him crucified. A religion will die for you. The Lord Jesus Christ who left heaven's glory and came down to the sin earth. He's the one who died for you. Many people are hiding behind um, faith. There are many famous people in the world today. But my friends, there is a part of the journey that all will forsake you and you alone have to face eternity. You alone as an individual will have to face eternity. I alone will have to face eternity. When our sister William time was called, she alone 
in spite of the, her loved ones surrounding her. She alone was there to face eternity as she left from time into eternity. Many are hiding behind popularity. Many are hiding behind wealth. Many are hiding behind so many things. My friends, what are you hiding with, behind this thing? But hear what? God called Adam by name. Adam, where are thou? Where are you? God is calling you, whatever your name is this morning. He's calling you by name. Whether you want to admit it or not. Whether you want to admit it or not. God is calling you by name. Here it is. Adam said, well, then we know we were naked. Who told you you were naked? Sin exposes. Sin exposes. In the garden, before sin entered in, there was no shame whatsoever. Not until sin entered in. God challenged them. Who told you? Who told you you were naked? When we think about the Lord Jesus Christ, He bore shame on the cross for us. We were, we could not, we were the ones who were guilty, but we could not have redeemed ourselves. The Lord Jesus Christ, the Prince of Glory, He bore the shame on Calvary. For the Word of God tells us that He was stripped of His garment. He was given a gorgeous robe as it were. So much of him was exposed. He bore shame for you and I. Adam and Eve hiding in the garden could not have prevented the all-seeing eyes of God. And friends, this morning, God is seeing you wheresoever you are. There's a story when the Lord Jesus Christ with Nathaniel, he said, even before I knew everything, I saw everything that transpired. And God is saying to you this morning, he knows everything about you. Your life is an open book before him, and so is my life. But thank God, the time was when I repented of my sins and trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. And as Sister Williams, I'm looking forward to the day when the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout with the voice of their angels. When the dead in Christ shall rise first, and those of us who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. My friends, where are you this morning? Are you on that narrow road which will ultimately lead you into everlasting life, or are you on the broad road? God knows you, can I repeat? God knows you by name. Here it is. He asks, where are you? You need to answer that question for yourself. You cannot answer, I cannot answer it for you. There are many of us here this morning who could answer with all assurance, not because of what we did, but what Christ has done in us. Because of the work he did in our hearts, when we repented of our sins, we can say that we are on our way to heaven and home. You know, so often we hear at funeral, she, she or he has gone to a better place. My friend, the only way you can go to a better place, uh, the decision would have been made in this life. God knows that we have to be righteous, but in the often of God we shall perish. So when you hear people say, he got, I know he's in a better place. He might, he, if he had lived or she had lived a life away from God, the word of God said, with I go, he cannot come. So don't get fooled that because people pat you on the shoulder and say he or she has gone to a better place. In this life, sin was committed, and in this life, sin must be dealt with by repentance, by trusting the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. So he said, who told you that you were, that you are naked? Why? Because sin exposes that relationship was severed between God and man. God came down in the cool of the day and communed with man. And because sin entered in, that relationship was severed. That thing was corrupted. And man is now, his conscience is now awakened. And my friends, that is one thing I know. We might say all sorts of things. We don't care about this and show little regard for the things of God. But God has placed a conscience in you. And he has placed a conscience 
in me and a time to would ask ourselves about our standing with God, our position with God. Where are you this morning as an individual? Are you trying to hide behind the things that cannot really protect you? Are you trying to do as Adam and Eve did? They, they hide behind the leaves of the trees. But what you see God did? God took an animal and made clothing from the skin of the animal. Probably it might have been a lamb. But for us, God sent his son, the Lamb of God, who died on Calvary, that we could have a hiding place. Not behind something frivolous as a tree. But we have a solid rock in the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is not for a chosen few. It is for whosoever will this morning. It is for whosoever will. Yes, the tears will flow. A loved one has been called away. A loved one has been called away. If you really love that person, you love a savior. If you really love that person, you will demonstrate it by repenting of your sins and trust the Lord Jesus Christ as savior. Because she is one who, who lived the life, who walked the talk. Yes, she wasn't perfect. None of us is. None of us are. But we thank God that Lord Jesus Christ, he's the one who makes us righteous for his father. Have you eaten of the tree? Because we are all descendants of Adam. We are all sinners by nature and by practice. Regardless of who you are. Show me a man, you show me a sinner. Show me a woman, you show me a sinner. For the word of God says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the, the other final question is, what have you done? What have you done? You know, when we think about what the world is going through, what you as an individual is going through, what I as an individual, individual am going through, all because it traces back to what took place, what transpired in, in Eden Garden. When we think about, as the Lord asked Eve, Eve, what hast thou done? When we think about the chaos the world is in, all began, all began in the Garden of Eden. And my friends, you need not go down to the bottom of the ocean on that ship. You can change course by trusting the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. You could answer that call this evening. What have you done? You have brought universal curse, as it were, to all mankind. It's a curse to all mankind. In the day of Egypt thereof, thou shalt surely die. Death, the consequences of that disobedience. And friends, it's not only physical death. It is appointed to men wants to die. But he didn't finish the so after death, the judgment. Mankind tell you after when we dead, we done. That is what man says. But God is saying after death, the judgment. Friends, I rather believe God. I rather believe God. So he's saying you know, that's the consequences of man's sin. The Lord Jesus Christ, he bore the curse on Calvary. The word of God tells us, cursed is every man that's hung upon a tree. He bore the curse, the, the curse that was ours. We could not have redeemed ourselves. He bore the curse on Calvary. And we go to God that you understand this this morning, that the price for your sins and my sins were, were laid on the Lord Jesus Christ. He paid the price. 2,000 years ago, as he bore your sins and my sins on Calvary. The word of God tells us, God made of him the iniquities of us all. My friend, you need you without excuse. The price has been paid. God paid the price this morning. You know, it's nice to be here. And we will um, um, reflect on the life of our departed sister. But it could have been you, it could have been me in this casket this morning. And where would you have been? Will the, those who pay tributes and family would have said the good term, absent from the body to be present with the Lord? 
if there are many of us, many amongst us him, would not have been able to say that. Well, I hope he didn't make it right. You know, this is the language many would say. And some would say, well, sorry for him or her, they had the opportunity and they didn't make use of it. The word of God tells us, wheresoever the tree falls, there it shall be. Whether to the east or the west, the north or the south, there is no repentance in the grave. No repentance in the grave. This book, in a while, the, the casket will be lowered into the earth. And that's it with the remains of her dear sister. But my friends, she's in glory. She's with her, with her Lord. The Lord Jesus Christ, him that cometh unto me, I will in no wise cast out. We would make mistake, but he never makes a mistake. He said, him that cometh unto me. You know, in spite of the fact that it's a fit at a funeral, you know, but you could begin life this evening. You, this morning, you can begin life this morning if you would repent and trust the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. If you would say, God for me, God for me, it would make so much a difference. But think time heals things. So you're hoping the next few days there'll be crying and grief and what have you. And before you know it, man goes back to his old ways. Man goes back to his old ways. But my friends, God is saying that after death, there's a judgment. Regardless of how you think, regardless of what you all feel this morning, God is saying that after death is the judgment. Bear in mind that the Lord Jesus Christ, he bore the curse. Bear in mind that the Lord Jesus Christ, he has put to our shame on Calvary. And he said to you, as I hasten to close, he said to you this morning, where are you? Where are you? I go to God that this question will burn to your souls. Those of you who do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, that your conscience will be uh, quick as it will, awake concerning your eternal well-being. Not by works of righteousness, which you have done, but according to his mercies, he has saved us. Yes, people are hiding up behind morality. Yes, it's good to be a morally upright person. It's good to be a charitable person. Well, but the honor of righteousness is and I give to us. You must be washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. That was told to the children of Israel in Egypt. And this morning, we would not only we would be covered by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, we would be cleansed. If it wasn't there, they were covered. But for us, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the word of God tells us, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin, past, present, and future. This is my little message to you this morning. But my closing word to you again, the same question which was asked by God to Adam. Where are you? Where are you this morning as far as your soul salvation is concerned? Amen. 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 When peace like a river attended my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, I was taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. My sin or the bliss of this glorious thought, my sin not in fact but the whole, is nailed to his cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O oh my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. Please change your position as we sing this song.
the sky, not the brain is of wood, O trump of the angel, O voice of the Lord, blessed hope, blessed rest of my soul. Friends, many of you for years, you've been fooling yourself and saying it is well with your soul. And you know within your heart that it isn't. I'm asking as we sing the last verse, those of us who have this blessed assurance that it is well with our soul, that you will sing it lustily. Those who haven't spent the time, get down before God in prayers, in tears. Because the question will ask one day, where are thou? And if you need to see our sister, your peer and your grandparent, and your friend in a coming day, it must be well with your soul now. Not after death. Beyond the grave there is no hope. We sing the last verse, those of us who know the Lord Jesus Christ, and those who don't, we trust that you get well now. Oh, oh. Was a 
first and the last is what is the word of God for the Jesus. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Not only him, but his household experience that as well. And so God, we pray special for this morning, even for the household and the family of our dear sister who has passed on, those who have not yet trusted Christ as Savior, it is our heart's desire that they too would come to know the Savior that she knew and loved and adored. Oh God, know that it is not that will let any should perish. And so God, we pray this morning that even our Father coming from this death, that life will be experienced by those who have not yet trusted Christ as Savior. So God, we pray that take up thy self praise, take up thy self glory, and bless our coming together. In spite of all of that time of sorrow and mourning, we know that weeping may endure for a night, but joy be coming to the morning. We are thankful of God to know that thou, Father, as the Father of compassion, and thou art the God of all comfort. And so God, take up thyself in praise. Glorify thyself in the remaining proceedings of this particular event, as we give to thee all the glory and all the praise in the wonderful, the precious, and the exalted name of thy Son, the one who alone is our Lord and the only Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> And you will be seated. At this time, the casket will be open for me. Uh, I was also asked to mention that there will be no request. As I said at the commencement, we are trying as much as possible to be obedient to the public regulation. So there will be no request. Does it look like in heaven? Is it peaceful? Is it free like they say? Does the sun shine bright forever? Have your fears and your pain gone away? Cause here on earth it feels like 
like everything good is missing since you left and here on earth everything's different there's an emptiness oh oh i i hope you're dancing in the sky I hope you're singing in the angels with your fears and your pain gone away. Cause here on earth it feels like everything good is missing since you left. And There's an emptiness Oh, oh, I, I hope you're dancing in the sky I hope you're singing in the angels' choir I hope the angels know what they have I bet it's so nice up in heaven since you arrived Tell me what do you do up in heaven Are your days filled with love and light Is the music, is the art an invention Be more alive Cause here on earth It feels like everything Good is missing Since you left And here on earth Everything's different There's an emptiness Dancing in the sky And I hope you're singing In the angels' choir I hope the angels know what they have I bet it's so nice up in heaven since you arrived I hope you're dead And I hope you're singing in the angels' choir I hope the angels know what they have I bet it's so nice up in heaven since you arrived Since you arrived
Sorry. Yes, are you? I was in your Yes. Does the sun shine bright forever? Have your fears and your pain gone away? Cause here on earth it feels like everything good is missing since you left And here on earth Everything's different There's an emptiness Oh, oh, I I hope you're dancing in the sky I hope you're singing In the angels' choir I hope the angels know what they have I bet it's so nice up in heaven since you arrived Tell me what do you do up in heaven? Are your days filled with love and light? Is the music, is the art an invention? Tell me, are you happy more alive? Cause here on earth it feels like everything Good is missing since you left And here Sing 